a man's shirt refashion into a wrap blouse that's coming up. Hello fashion sewers, I hope you are well. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Colleen G. Lee. And if you're into refashioning of old clothing, consider subscribing and let's get started. So this is the shirt I am going to refashion and I'm going to make it very similar to the shirt that I've got on now. I know you can't see it fully but I'll show you that in a moment. So this shirt is going to look very similar this shirt will look very similar to this one and it's all about the folds and the crossover in order to create those gorgeous folds within a man's shirt. So, so the tools that you are going to need are as follows. So you can see some pins, a pair of scissors, some thread and a seam ripper and you're going to need a hand sewing needle. Yes, there's a bit of sewing that's going to be happening in this for your um, for your button which I'll obviously reveal to you later but yeah there's going to be a little bit of hand sewing involved so let's get to the um, me trying on the shirt and starting the draping effect in order to create this wrap over crossover blouse so this is the effect it's a draping effect with this crossover top So I'm just going to put another shirt on. So try your shirt on and we're going to start with the button side and we're going to cross that over to the other side like so. And you can, as you can see there's natural folds that is happening in the shirt. Now we're going to get the button that's roughly around your waistline. Roughly my waistline, get that button. We're going to fold it like so on top of the other button. Or you can put it on top or maybe above. It really does depend on the kind of fold your shirt will allow. And that's okay. That's fine. And then you're going to put a pin. like so. So you created that first fold there. But make sure that there is a button showing because you're going to need that button in order to keep the top in place. So that will come a bit later. But make sure you've got a button there. And if you wanted to, like if you raise your shoulders up a little bit and bring it back down, it enables you to create more folds so that you have greater control of the look you're looking for. So I like that. Now what's happening here. That's nice. Yeah, that's great. That's really, really nice. And if you if you dare to, you can also pin this into your top, which I'm going to do now, just so that it stays in place and then I'm going to get the other side and cross it over and I'm going to bring my shoulders up again so I can create more folds and bring it a little bit taut to about here. I'm holding on to a buttonhole here and I'm bringing that there because that is where you're going to be putting a button in order for it to stay in place and then just at the side, create more folds at the seam here. I could do another one. So I've got two just there. That's nice. Yeah, I think I think I'm happy with the two. I may go for the third one. So I've got one here. And really it's a case of just playing around, second one there, so one, two, and maybe a third one. 
and just kind of wriggle yourself in the shirt so you can get the folds that you want. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to put a pin here. And then really have a good look at the folds that I've created and see if I'm happy. Yeah, I am. I may change it just a little bit because I'm, I'm only looking through my small viewfinder on my camera. So I really do need a full length mirror. I, I advise you to be in front of a full length mirror when you're doing this. So, but no, I'm happy with what I'm seeing at the moment. And like I said, there might be a slight change. So yeah, so quick and easy crossover top from a man's shirt. I'll show you the back. See, it's, there's a bit of volume there and that's fine. I'm happy with that. It looks cute. So next thing we need to do is to pin those into position. One there. One there. And one more. Here. Yeah, that's nice. So the side seam of the shirt, you can see I've got three folds and place pins into position to keep those folds in place. And then it's just a case of just fix it to make sure that you are happy. If you want to create any more folds, I might create another one here. Yeah. I think that's a nice place to have another one. And put the pin in position to keep it in place. Show you there. We've created another fold and it's going to create volume at the back. But that is, it just offers balance, I think, in the shirt and just keeping it really original. So yeah, I'm happy with the way it looks. So what we're going to do next is we're going to sew down this seam here to keep those folds in place. And then we're going to sew this one down into place. So, and then we'll work on the buttons um, which is going to involve some hand sewing. I know, but it's worth it, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> For a lovely top like this, it's definitely worth doing the hand sewing. So it's so that you can keep the blouse in this position, this cross over. So we now have the shirt here and it's got all the pins in and the next thing we need to do is take it over to my sewing machine and just do a small amount of sewing just to hold those those um, folds in place and then we're going to do some hand sewing. Okay, the first line of stitching we're going to do is on the first fold that we created at the button stand, which is here. So I'm going to sew along here and then along the other side. This one's quite close to the edge. Take the pins out. I'll take my pin out and needle down and then just start sewing. And stop. That's fine. And then I'm going to just sew along here. You can feel the actual stand and just sew on top of that. So it's there.
so that is one that's in place and complete. Just put those threads away. I'll cut them away later so I don't waste any time. So I'm going to do the next one which is on the same side as the first wrap that I did in the side seam. You can see here and it really is about just feeling as you go along so I know it needs to start there and then just put your foot down and your needle down remove your pin and just sew that into place so we've got this fold here we're going to keep in place and back okay that's the first one that's complete great and we're going to go on to the opposite side of the shirt. We should have three pins in place there. So I'm going to turn my shirt this way. So I'm working from the hem down. Just easier to get it through the sewing machine like so. And put down didn't mean to do that to continue sewing Colleen take the pins out as you go So even though I'm not on the actual seam of the shirt here, I'm just trying to keep a straight line. That doesn't matter because it's all about the folds and it's just the natural way the shirt is folding itself. And that don't don't try and line things up if you don't have to. Because remember, you're just focusing on creating those curves. So it just becomes disjointed. That's just part of the process of refashioning. All right, ready to sew down the last fold now. Stop. Yeah. Rewind. And cut. All those are now in place. All the folds there. And now it's just a place the placement of the button. So I'm going to take it over to my table and show you what to do next. Okay, so the next stage is to remove the buttons. So before I talk about the buttons, let's just check on these folds that we've created. So that is going to be the first fold, the first wrap that we did. Created so we sewed along the button stand and also the side seam to create just one fold there. On the opposite side, it created three folds. You may have three folds, you may have two, you may even have more than in three. Just do what you feel is right when you are doing the wrap over for your body shape. So, um, now the buttons. So, in order for the crossover to stay in position. We're going to need to do some hand sewing and that requires us doing some buttons. On men's shirts, you usually find spare buttons that are sewn onto a shirt. It's either on the front, as it is in this case, at the bottom, or it could be on the inside of the shirt. So the last two buttons are the ones we're going to, re going to remove. It's just a case of just removing the thread and 
like so. Okay, so um, I would recommend putting the shirt back on to make sure that you're happy with the folds. Um, um, it's easy to do, so if you need to readjust it, it's really easy to do that. And to just check of the placements of the buttons before we sew them onto the shirt. So I'll put the shirt back on, and then we're going to cross it over like so, the first wrap that we did. So it's nice and comfortable and you're happy with how it looks. And this is the button we are going to use in order for it to be fastened and you're going to need a pin. A pin here. So there. And then you bring the other shirt around, the other half of the shirt around like so and just get that into position as well. I want to make sure that we've got a button on the inside so that the wrap stays in position otherwise if you don't do it you'll find that this this side will start to move itself to one side and there's the button is there so I'm going to get my pin And put it into position like so and then bring this one over if you don't like straight pins like that being so close to your body that's fine just use safety pins and then bring the other to the other side until you're happy with the way that it looks and find that buttonhole which is there and I'm going to put another pin there for where my second button is going to go. Like so. And then change back into my other shirt. Okay, so you should now have your pins in position. So you can choose whichever button you prefer. You've always got two sizes of buttons on a man's shirt. The smaller one is for the cuff and the front is the bigger button of the two. So I'm going to put the smaller button on the front and get my needle and thread and sew that into position. If you don't know how to sew on a button, I do have a tutorial on how to do that. I will link it below and also in the card. Okay, now it's time to create the chain loop because this button is going to be fastened onto the chain loop. So that's position for the button. And if you don't know how to do a chain loop, then I also have a video tutorial on how to do that. The technique is exactly the same as doing a French tack. So that video tutorial will say French tack, but it's the same technique. So I'm just going to start off here and then do watch that video tutorial before attempting this. Okay, the, so this is my chain loop here that I've just created. And this is what the button is going to go through. I'm just going to tie that off. Do a couple of knots. One more. Yep, happy with that. And put that away.
and then my button should be able to fasten it into the loop like so. So we're going to get the first one, it's going to go to that new loop, so that stays in position. Like so, happy. And yeah, let's make sure that I'm, yep. And then get the second drop over to the next button, like so. And yeah, there is your wrap blouse. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Yeah, I love, the, I love the pocket actually. Now I've got a few of these shirts now. <laughs> but that is nice. That's really cute. So that's an asymmetrical feel to it. And it's the kind of thing that I like. So yeah, happy with the results. Yeah, that is really nice. I hope you have enjoyed this refashioning of a man shirt into a wrap blouse or crossover top. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and please do share. If you have any comments or questions you want to ask, put those in the comment box below. Don't forget to check the links for the button loop and also have so on a button if you haven't done that before. If you wish to subscribe to my channel for more refashioning video tutorials, don't forget to hit the bell in order to in order to receive notifications of when I upload and I'll see you next time.